think Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Origination fee. Origination fee. Okay, this is a fee that goes right to the lender. Yeah. Um, good news is there's a lot of zero origination fee products out there in the market. HUD sets forth a floor and a ceiling, and they say that there's a formula for calculating everything between the floor and the ceiling. HUD's floor is twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah. Their ceiling is six thousand, but HUD then tells the lending community, feel free to be competitive. So the lending community is competitive. And so there are very low and in some cases zero origination fee products out there in the marketplace today, okay? Yep. So that's where the good news is on these closing costs. The other thing you'll find out in the marketplace out there, your client, if they're shopping around, is that lenders, because it's getting more competitive, are starting to offer lender credits to offset some of these third-party closing costs and some of these government insurance premiums. So that what used to be for your client a, um, let's see, $1,250 plus $2,500 plus maybe an origination fee, what might have been, say, a five or $6,000 closing cost yeah, or more, figure, or, more, or perhaps yeah. more, yeah. might be a $1,000 or $800 or $2,000 total closing cost figure. You mean, you mean origina origination? No, total, total closing cost. costs because lenders out there today are offering what they call lender credits to incentivize oh, borrowers see. to do business with them. I see. So the lender right? may actually be paying, for example, some of that attorney's fee. Yes. That otherwise, although the, 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 the borrower wouldn't have had to come to the closing and pay it up front because it could yep. have just been part of the reverse yes. mortgage, right? Now it's gone. Com yes. It may be gone completely. Yes. Right? yes. So, so, to, so once again, to, just to recap in, in my own head, if at the time of closing, closing costs are going to equal those attorneys' fees, mm -hmm. right? Well, I'll call attorneys' fees the sure. general closing costs about twenty five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? That's probably not going to vary a lot in, based on the size just of the mortgage bucks. because they're always the same, right? Yep. Um, this FHA fee, which may be half of 1%, as long as the, you're within the first, initially you're taking less than 60% of all your money. Correct. Right? Which in my client's case would have been about $1,250. Right. right? Uh, and then these, uh, these origination fees that could be between, you said between two and ten thousand dollars. Anywhere from between zero and six thousand dollars. Six thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? But you're saying that right now in the market, because there are a lot of apparently because there are a lot of players and people are interested in this, those fees are looking a lot more like zero than they are at yes. Looking, and, and that you've told me that even in addition to that, some lenders are actually help trying to help clients pay for those other things, the reverse the the, the attorney's fees and all that stuff. Correct. So Correct. you may be getting so, so so often, the, the numbers that I would hear from a client are between ten and fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's what it's going to cost you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying that, that that that's very different. Those right? days are gone unless it's someone who is in a home worth north of five hundred thousand dollars and needs to use more than that sixty percent at closing to extinguish an existing mandatory obligation. Or to do a ton of repairs. Or to do a ton of it, repairs. Because occasionally I'll have that happen too. Well, in, in this particular client's case. It wasn't a ton in terms of big numbers, but the goal of the reverse mortgage was to not only have a fund in, available to pay for home care, but also to be able to do some repairs to the house to make the bedroom or the uh, the bathroom more accessible for her in the kitchen, and that those were all, all ended up being part of the the reverse mortgage. Okay, right, right. That's really interesting. Yep. So, so now I'm just going to throw a couple of other examples. So, sure. what what about so say that my client had a husband, okay, and the husband was 80, okay. Uh, what happens then? Then it would be based off the 80-year-old husband's age, the, the amount of the loan. So the total amount available is always based on the other spouse's Youngest age. spouse's age. Now, if the two spouses are living in the home, mm -hmm. do they both have to be owning that home in order for them to, to get a reverse mortgage? Not necessarily, but if they both are named on the deed, yep. then they both have to be borrowers named on the reverse mortgage. But if they both live there, but mm -hmm. only one is on title, mm -hmm. then only the title owner is our borrower. The other one is what we call a non-borrowing spouse. And there are some new protections in place for non-borrowing spouses. 
um, since August, this yep. last August that just yep. passed. It used to be that if you had two spouses and one was on title in the reverse mortgage borrower and one was not, but just living in the home or maybe not living in the home, yep. and the borrower title owner died, then the loan became due and yep. payable and there was no protection for the, for the non-borrowing spouse. Uh, that has changed for all new loans now that are originated. As mm -hmm. long as you were married at the time of application and you remain married through the duration of the loan, if the borrower spouse dies, the non-borrowing spouse, though they can't get access to any of the money because they're not a borrower. Because they're not a borrower. They can remain in the home and not have to repay the loan for as long as they live there as their principal residence. I see. And pay the taxes and pay the homeowner's insurance. That's really fascinating. Significant protection for non-borrowing spouses. That's, that's really, that is yeah. really significant. I'm going to give you one more, one more question. Sure. This is, more, this is a little bit arcane here, mm -hmm. um, but for many of my clients, one of their issues is trying to protect their home in the event they eventually need nursing home care. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to do that right in order to it would is to take that home and to transfer an interest in it the, re, the remainder interest the, the interest in the house after they die mm -hmm. either to their children or to an irrevocable trust with typically one of their children named as a trustee okay right? but to keep the life estate okay right so if my client does that and th and therefore at the time they're applying for the reverse mortgage only owns the life estate mm -hmm. can they do that and that's the first question. And the second question is if like, my client already has a reverse mortgage and then goes through this exercise of mm -hmm. transferring out and keeping a life estate, is that a violation or a default under the mortgage? No, it is not. It's so not. a life estate interest is sufficient interest to apply for a reverse mortgage and will consider the entire value of the house, not just the value of the life estate. Yep. The remaindermen have to be a, or has to be a natural person. It cannot be the trustee of a trust, ah. okay? So, mm -hmm. kids can be remaindermen, of course, or anyone else can be a remaindermen, but it's going to be a person. It can no longer be a trust. Uh, if you have a reverse mortgage, you can do a life estate transfer. You can also do a transfer to a revocable trust. You don't, you're the expert on protections that does right. and does not provide. Without going through those details. Not going through those details, yeah. but revocable trusts are okay. Life estates are fine. With that, with that in mind, Thank you very, very much for coming. Sure. We are running close on time. Thank you for listening. I hope this was educational for you, that you can understand a little bit about the pluses and minuses of, these, of these, all of this. And if you've got questions, you want to talk to a reverse mortgage professional, this is one of them. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the next show. Bye-bye.